Now it should work. It's either one thing or the other. I either don't turn, I leave it on mute, or I don't turn it on. It's one of the other things. I'll blame it on the heat. <laughs> Typical October here in Ventura County. Our summer goes all the way through, uh, probably till the early part of mid-November sometimes. It gets really, really hot. So uh, again, welcome this morning to worship, everyone. Bruce, you want to pull me back just a little bit, please? Thank you. Today's lessons, again, parables. But this is the third time that we're talking in parable about a vineyard. And I'll explain a little bit of that a little bit later. But you've got to understand what Jesus is looking at here. In this vineyard parable, the vineyard serves as an image of the people of Israel, the prophet's mission, and Christ's death. For Christians, the vineyard also speaks of God's love given to us for the forgiveness of sins. So I ask you to stand as we are, as you are able as we open today's service in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please join with me in a prayer of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, the one who forms us, Jesus, who bears the cross, the Spirit who makes our joy complete. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sins. Steadfast and faithful God. You have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are asked to ask for the sake of others, for the harm we have caused, known and unknown, forgive us. For the unjust demands we place on others and your creation, forgive us. For the way we turn away from you and our neighbor, forgive us. Lead us back to you and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already and always forgiven. And we join together and sing our gathering song, My Song is Love Unknown.
Let us pray. Beloved God, from you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your spirit to know those things that are right. And by your merciful guidance, help us to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Please be comfortable for our first reading. <clears throat> Good morning. Um, today's lesson is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it. He hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed. Righteousness, but heard a cry. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel today comes from the 24th chapter of Matthew, starting at the 33rd verse. Glory to you, Lord. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the last, more than the first time, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son, saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. <clears throat> Jesus said to them, have you ever read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected becomes the cornerstone? This is what the Lord's doing. And it is amazing in our eyes. 
Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on the stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard this parable, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be comfortable. Give me one minute, please. Tim, about having water available. You know, I was looking for a title that I could give to this message. And the only one I could come up was Grapes of Wrath, Grapes at Last. Jesus brings us to the third parable about a vineyard. In the first one, you can remember that was a couple weeks ago, it was about hiring workers throughout the day and paying them all the same. Last week, Jim, in the second parable, the owner had two sons. One that said he'd work and didn't and one that said he wouldn't work, but did. Today's parable, third one, where instead of hired hands working in the vineyard, instead of the sons to tend the vineyard, the owner has let out the vineyard to tenants, to sharecroppers. Okay, enough of that parable. I'm going to step away from a little bit from the gospel reading. And how would everybody here like to hear a love song? Remember the song Three Dog Night did? I think it was Three Dog Night. Old-fashioned love song. Anyway, I would assume everybody would like to hear a love song. To learn how much God has done for you and to learn how much God expects from you. What percentage of songs on the radio are about love? 99? I was going to give you a range, 50, 60, 70, 80, whatever. 99, that's a good answer. I don't think anybody knows the exact percentage. And whether it's rock or pop or gospel or or whatever, I would say most love songs that you hear on the radio today are about love and relationships. Does that mean that the songwriters understand love because they write about it so much? I don't think so. Not when you consider that most love songs are about people trying to figure out love. Wouldn't it be refreshing to hear a love song given by somebody who really knows what love is? That's what my message is about this morning. It is a love song written by and sung by God himself. And it is meant for us. Believe it or not, we already heard it. I don't know if you all are paying attention, but Robin sings really well because it was our first reading from Isaiah. When people write love songs, they use nicknames like Honey Pie or 
pumpkin or, or sunshine to describe the loved ones. In his song, God calls his loved ones vineyard. God calls us this because he wants us to learn how much that he has done for us. Just think about how much work it is to plant a vineyard. If you were going to do it on a hilltop here in the Santa Clara River Valley, you would first have to clear away all the scrub bushes, all the cactus plants. You'd have to work and till the ground and remove all the stones, plant good vines, and then build a fence around it to keep out all the critters. God says he's done all that for us today and more. But what, what does God mean when he said he cleared the stones from us, planted us, and put a fence around us? First of all, he is describing what he has done for us spiritually. Contrary to what a whole bunch of people might think, when it comes to spiritual encounters, God makes the initial contact. Not us. God does. We do not go looking for God any more than the patch of ground goes looking for the farm. It can't. It can't move. The farmer must seek out and work the soil for it to be productive. Wasn't that how it worked out in the Garden of Eden? Adam, when after, after Adam and Eve had eaten from the tree they weren't supposed to eat from, they ran and hid from God because they were afraid. Adam and Eve would have remained in hiding had not God come looking for them and promised to send them a Savior. to help with their sins. God continues to pursue sinners today. In fact, he's doing it right now. In the words of the first reading we had today, he wants you and me to know that he loves us. He is doing more than just telling us he loves us. He is creating and strengthening faith in that promise of love. Just as the farmer had to remove the stones before he could plant his vineyard, God must work over our stony hearts, remove our doubts and skepticism before he plants faith. This happens any time that we hear or we meditate on words from the Bible. Through those words, the Holy Spirit enters our hearts and goes to work to create faith. Even after faith has been created, the Holy Spirit stays on to protect that faith and to nurture it just as the farmer stays on to prune his vines once they've been planted. So why has God done all this stuff for us? Why does a farmer go through the hassle of planting a vineyard? He plants the vineyard so he can enjoy the fruit that it produces. In that same way, God has created the faith in our hearts that will also produce fruit that is going or that is doing things that bring God joy. So what is it that brings God joy? In Galatians, St. Paul tells us that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, Patience, 
kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. When God sees us doing this stuff, it brings him joy. But is that what God sees us produce? It's not what he saw in the Israelites of the prophet Isaiah's day. God had expected his people to produce, produce choice grapes because he had done so much for them, but he stand, instead he only found sour ones. On the outside, the Israelites may have looked good, but on the inside, they're rotten. God kind of brings that out in a wordplay in the last verse of our text we heard this morning. God said, for the justice, God looked for justice, but found bloodshed. He sought righteousness, but only heard the cries of distress. The Israelites may have thought that they were living the way that they were living, was good enough for the Lord. Close enough to righteousness and the justice that he demanded. But it's not. They were way off target. In fact, they were doing the opposite of what God expected them to do. Do you think we're guilty of the same thing? Have we tricked ourselves into thinking that we are doing what God wants? When in reality, we're doing the opposite. Have you ever said when you're driving down the road, I have never committed an act of road rage, so God has to be happy with me? God, yeah, yeah, he's pretty happy that you hadn't cut anybody off the highway for the purpose, you know, did it on purpose and put those people in danger. But God expects more from his vineyard. He wants us to show the fruit of patience, peace, and gentleness in the words that we speak and the thoughts that we entertain about other drivers. Failure to do this or failure to think nothing but kind thoughts about others on the road is the same as plowing into the cars and driving them into the median for a crash. Because the Israelites had not produced the fruit that God wanted, he said to them, now I will tell you what I am going to do with my vineyard. I will take the hedge away, and it will be destroyed. I will break down the wall, and it will be trampled. I will make it a wasteland, neither pruned or cultivated, with briars and thorns will grow there. I will command the clouds not to rain on it. Since his vineyard had not produced the grapes that he had wanted, God was going to let the vineyard be destroyed. I, I, I'm getting these looks and going, they said this was supposed to, be, supposed to be a love song, right? Well, it still is. The fact that the Israelites, or the fact that God told the Israelites what lay in store for them because they had failed to produce fruit was a loving thing. He warned them about the consequences of their sins because he did not want them to suffer those consequences. Make sense? Isn't that why that parents will tell their children not to touch a hot stove? Parents will describe the blisters that would form in the throbbing pain of the burn because they don't want their children to experience it 
firsthand. God speaks to us the same way this morning. He warns us that if we continue to ignore his word and do things our way, that if we keep producing bloodshed when he calls for justice, we will have to suffer the dire consequences of having God's loving attention taken away from us forever. So what do we do? Should we try harder to produce good, produce the fruit that God wants? No. We need to start by looking back at the first part of the reading in Isaiah and be reminded of how much God has done for us. We heard how God worked to create faith in our hearts. But faith in what? Not just in faith that there is a God. Faith in God's Son, Jesus. Jesus came to this earth to remove our sins. Like the farmer clearing stones in the field, Jesus cleared the sins from our lives and bore their weight on the cross. Was this backbreaking work? Not really. But it was life-breaking work that Jesus did and saved us from God's punishment. A good love song will give you goosebumps. Especially if that song is sung to you by somebody that loves you. You, you will not find any songs like that on the radio but you will find them in the Bible. In fact, our reading this morning that Robin did for us, the God of the universe has professed his love for you. He has not only professed it, he has demonstrated it through Jesus. May that love for us produce the fruit that God seeks. May we be patient gentle, loving, and kind because we are God's vineyard. Amen. I ask you to stand as you're able as we join together in singing our hymn of the day, the Church of Christ in Every Age.
Please be comfortable, as always, I would like you to be um, as we start prayers. And as I'd like to open them up to the floor in just a minute, that things that I have to say um, concerning, concerning the world today, concerning a war that may be starting in the Middle East, considering a war that still continues in Ukraine, Considering Ohana, family, for the people in Hawaii that suffered so much in Lahaina. Remember the people that are in our grace house. Keep them in your prayers. Keep everybody in your prayers. Keep the world in our prayers. Is there anybody that would like to offer? Betty? Are we on, Bruce? Yeah, yeah. Remembering Gail Tenbus and her husband. Her, her husband passed away this week and her family. <laughs> My uh, brother, Bo, in Canada, he has vision problems anyway, but now there's a, I think it's a blood spot in the middle of his eye, so it's, it's worse, so hopefully that will uh, heal and dissolve. So prayers for both. I'd like to ask for prayers for my friend Karen. She has some kind of mass um, on her brain, and she's going to have some surgery on Tuesday. And then also my friend Pat, who is um, in treatment for cancer, um, had a really bad week, and um, I think one of the things we know about people who are are fighting against cancer, it really wears them out to the point where sometimes they wonder, should I continue this fight? But we want her to um, just trust in God and continue to to fight. Uh, continued recovery for my brother Craig, who had a heart attack a couple of weeks ago. He was released from the hospital uh, this week, so our family is very thankful that you know he's continuing to make a good recovery, and we hope that it stays that way. Prayers for my neighbors and I as we deal with uh, parking lot repairs and trying to find parking in a very limited area around the neighborhood. So that's going to be challenging for the sick, disabled, and the elderly in the complex. So I hope that everybody can uh, deal with that challenge. Anybody on Zoom? Anybody else? Anybody online? There's our friendly people that are online. Eileen, everybody, glad to see you. I noticed that Helen is not in church this morning, so I hope she's okay. She is. She is. <laughs> that Helen is, is fine. She just wasn't ready this morning to get going, so... She overslept, so she's fine. We checked on her this morning. Thank you. Yeah, she's going to be here on Wednesday, to, as the love ladies always are, on, on, to work on quilts. Anybody else? Kaplingers. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to keep uh, our neighbor... Jean, she's 101 years old. She still belongs to the Presbyterian Church around the corner from our church. Well, today the congregation will be accepting the resignation of their pastor who has been there for 10, 12 years. And also the church is going through a very difficult time because they are going to be selling their property and they are not sure exactly what their future is, but they would might be uh, looking to go into the El Rio neighborhood 
to maybe start a new church since there is no Presbyterian or any other church in that area. So if we could keep our, our, our church neighbors in our prayers. Thank you. Everybody catch all that? Okay, the situation, I guess, is with the Presbyterian church down the street. Um, their pastor, after 10 or 12 years, is looking for a sabbatical, maybe, maybe just backing off, whatever. Whatever he wants to do, retire. So we have to keep that church in mind for us because they are our brothers and sisters in Christ. So let's keep them in in time. Anybody else? Let us pray. Trusting in the transformative power of God's loving spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of all grace, you are the source of life and joy. Strengthen the resolve of your church throughout the world that together we press on towards the goal of your heavenly call in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. God of all creation, you plant and nourish the earth as your own precious vineyard. Bless the fields and orchards and the hands of those who labor in them, that your people are fed with an abundant harvest of good fruit. Lord, in your mercy. God of all the earth, you desire peace and justice between nations and peoples. Guide leaders of nations, states, provinces, and cities that they faithfully govern your people with wisdom, integrity, and compassion. Lord, in your mercy. God of all compassion, in, in Christ, you lovingly poured yourself out like wine for your people. Have mercy on all that mourn, who struggle with their mental health, whose cry out for justice, whose hunger, and for those whose prayers we ask for today, and for the prayers that we hold in our hearts, for all in any need. Lord, in your mercy. God of all steadfastness, you sent Christ, you sent Christ as a cornerstone and the foundation of the church. Build up this congregation as living stones, that it stands in the community as a witness to your enduring faithfulness and love. Lord, in your mercy. God of all hope, the saints who came before us lived and died with their hearts fixed on you. We give you thanks for their faithful witness And we wait with hope for the great day when we join their voices in praise. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, into your hands we commend for all whom we pray. Trusting in your unending love and your amazing grace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be with you all. Please share that as you feel comfortable.
Let us pray. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved, Jesus Christ, our Savior. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. mighty and merciful Lord. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached the good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial for the evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us join together in singing Lamb of God. And after we complete that, please come to the table. Everybody is welcome. The banquet is ready.
Please stand as you're able. Let us pray. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word, Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts. Strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. A few announcements. Good morning, everyone. Um, there will be stretch and prayer this Monday at 5 p.m. here in the sanctuary. The quilting ladies will be meeting Wednesday at 9, and they will be putting the quilts out on the pews. Because at dinner church on Saturday, we will have quilt sat Saturday instead of quilt Sunday. So you'll be able to see all the beautiful quilts that were put together. So please come and join us. We're having chili, I believe, and cornbread. And so please come and join us. That's at 5 p.m. Also, the book study is starting Monday, October 16th. I think the book is called American Idolatry. Is that the name of the book? And it's at 7 o'clock on Zoom. Is that correct? I didn't. Well, wait. Let me pull that back. <laughs> is it 6.30? 6.30. On Zoom. So if you're interested in participating, it's Monday, October 16th. Also, we are collecting towels for community action. They are in need of towels, so that's our project for this month. So I've contacted all my friends and neighbors to let them know we need towels. So maybe you can reach out to some of your neighbors and um, see if they have any towels they would like to get rid of. Also, our silent auction trunk or treat event is October 28th. We're still looking for donations if you're able to donate. If you don't want to donate and want to make a monetary um, donation, you can do so by writing a check and putting a silent auction on there. And then we will go ahead and use that money um, probably for baskets or whatever is needed in order to get everything together. Um, I think I covered everything, did I not? Okay, Arlen? Says I'm on. Okay, anyway, like I was saying, I love this. I mean, I, I, there's got to be a way I can figure out some way to do this, a button or, or whatever. There is a button on the phone, but I could have swore that I turned it on. Anyway, as I said, Breast Cancer Awareness Month for the month of October. Take that into consideration in your prayers and everything else like that. Um, believe it or not, it touches a lot of people. It touches a lot of people. Not people necessarily that just have breast cancer, but it touches the families of those people that have breast cancer also. Um, did we mention um, trunk or treat? Okay. So that's not only, but I can't speak, I can't hear. Any birthdays and anniversaries? Who's, who? Mine? No, mine's two weeks away. Yeah, two weeks away. I won't be here either. <laughs> I, no, I, I, I will. Yeah, I will be. I will be in uh, Palm Springs at the Oasis. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Um, one other quick thing, if I don't trip going up the stairs. Next Saturday, of course, Saturday church, right? Come and see the work of God that you guys did. Everybody here did. God's work. It was our hands, but it was God's work. Come and see quilts 
come and see school kids. Please stand for the blessing. The glory of God, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. And we go out singing, all who love and serve your city. Go in peace. God is at work in you. And speak to God. <laughs>